How, how'd you pull this one off, Coach? Huh. Yeah, I, I am. I'm still taking it in right now. Um, yeah, the. Sorry, I'm a little lost for words. Um, yeah, I, I really trust. Uh, you know, this one is like, built off previous championships because we've just learned how to teach this game over and over again. And I think uh, I think it will be impossible today to have them execute if we just. Yeah, we just you know hadn't learned in years past like what this comes down to, um, and so I, I really, am, as much as I'm enjoying this victory, I'm thinking that it's not possible without uh, the other victories before it. <laughs> what was your process in finding out the result? Were you watching the scores go back and forth? How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, we were uh, we were watching the scores go back and forth. We actually we actually felt really good about it, no matter what, because we just knew they'd executed a really great team race, uh, and so I'm like you know first second I. It, one of the dangers when you just really downplay winning so much is that, if, you know, you try not to take the defeats too hard, but you also try not to take the wins too much either. So I just knew we'd had a great team race, um, and uh, I felt great about that. I couldn't wait to find them. I couldn't wait to see the guys and uh, and just celebrate that, whether we were second. Um, and then you see, the, didn't see the tiebreaker, and I, I did my math on the tiebreaker. I thought we were okay, but, you know, then there's a protest. So, yeah, I lost about 10 years off my life in the in that 10 minutes at the line trying to sort out the sort out the results, but it worked in our favor. What was the protest about? Uh, you know, they, um, the 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 finish line where the the line where the chip is and the actual measured finish line are not the same line. They're across, they're separated by a couple of inches, and so uh, you got to make sure that the way the rule is written, you got to make sure that the body actually gets in front and it's not just the chip. So. Yeah, cross country coach uh, stuff. Which is the line that matters? The actual finish line or the? Ship the finish. Line? The finish line is actually before, uh, it's a, and so about about six inches later. So if someone's body actually gets over it, but then it changes by the chip. It, anyway, so you got to you got to sort that stuff out at the finish line. Did it's you finalize? It's though? finalized. Yeah. Did you work on leaning with the team? <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild. It uh, it looks like the tiebreaker came down to George uh, George Kusher. So um, who's a guy who struggled for us all season, and you know. This is like the equivalent, you know, you're in your driveway shooting hoops, practicing, uh, you know, winning the NBA finals on a buzzer beater. It has, this is the equivalent of that in cross country. And in a program that you're, when you're always teaching that every, everyone matters and every place matters, to win a national championship on a tiebreaker is like, yeah, now, now they'll finally listen to us when we're uh, drilling that into their head over and over. So Bosley and Nico looked an awful lot like Day and Baxter, we were saying. Was it, did you? pull from that game plan today? Yeah, the, that race plan is gas, gas, gas. And, um, you know, we, we used the the data from the championships, two championships ago at Oklahoma State to learn how to race this race. We knew that if we stretched out the front, we were going to position those guys far enough out. Um, so that was, uh, you know, that data proved really fruitful today. Uh, we were going to pull those guys away. And even if uh, they fell off the front, the worst they're going to finish is, you know, second, third, something like that. So when you're looking at team points through two, you know, we were going to have within five points, I thought. Um, and that's what we needed to secure. So the guys, uh, you know, three, four, five, six, seven could could do their jobs. It does seem achievable coming off of Nico when a lot of guys finish in the hundreds in a race that was basically pre next yeah. here. And now they finish in the top 40. That doesn't happen typically. What yeah. happened in that month span to go from the medical performance to this performance? <clears throat> yeah, I, I screwed up in the um, I screwed up in the middle of the season, and I just uh, I, I, I I just had didn't have their legs underneath them in the middle of the season. I made some mistakes in training, and uh, that was that was on me. Um, and so they just had to, they just had to suffer through that uh, and get their get their butts kicked at, at Nutty Comb and um, but. You know, the cool thing about our sport, right, is like, you know, if you could, as long as they just don't lose hope and they just keep, they just stay with it, you know, they get to see how the season turns out. And uh, I just kept telling the locker room, like, this is, we're, we're actually, we're actually good. We're in a great place. I, I knew this is as strong a team as we've ever had. I, you know, I research our competition well, but um, a lot of people don't have experience doing it on this day. And I think if you look at the results, um, it's hard to execute on this day. So fortunately, it's not one of the Nutty Comb Invitational. Um, and we just had to make sure they kept believing that. Santiago Cross had like a huge day for you guys today. Like, did you expect him to finish that high up? How did he get to this point? Like, Man, there's always a guy, there's always a guy, that, there's always a guy in the way of this meet that, you know, uh, makes me remember, you know, why, why I want to be a coach. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a guy who's just worked through a lot of, you know, Conquered a lot of fear, um, and uh, yeah, had to, 
um, yeah, I had, to, I had to face a lot to get here, and uh, he, he, ex <laughs> he, he executed in a huge way for us. So proud of him. Yeah. Can you be honest, what were your thoughts on the tiebreaker move? It's broken by head-to-head yeah. head and not by six man. Before I know. this meet, did you think that's the right way to break the Oh, ice? man, I've gone back and forth. I mean, I, 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 love, the, I love the six man and the tiebreaker, and I, I'm used to that. <laughs> I'll say that that wouldn't have, uh, that would not have, uh, uh, we would have lost, <laughs> lost today based on, the, on that uh, way of scoring. So I'll go ahead and say that I love the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. <laughs> was, the, was the feeling and the mood different, like coming to this championship versus the last six or seven, just because the regular season was so different? Um, I, I think for our guys that you know they had a lot more uncertainty heading into this we got nice momentum at the conference and regional meet and you know it's you, you're always asking them to trust their coaches and you know I I, I was asking them to put a lot of trust into us and, and you know it, we um, we had a meeting about a week ago we had our big our big meeting on this about a week ago and I started off by saying hey guys you, this is when you need to trust me I've done this a million times you just need to you need to trust what I'm telling you but you know I think when you don't have those race results for early season there's a lot of uncertainty you know for sure and so I, I, I give it to them for staying with it and seeing the season through guys can you describe what the process was of finding out you were the champions how that played out for you guys 